Sex with a woman was a necessary evil to white folks. For pleasure, homosexual sex is preferred. The Pope looks out at a large black penis every morning when he opens his shades. The whole European expansion, that was a homosexual enterprise. The Victorian expansion, British expansion, most of those colonels were homosexuals. In fact, in a very important book, Homosexuality and Colonization, it's documented that European colonies were all seen as homosexual playground. Part of the whole buck-breaking process was the emasculation of the male slave. And so they would take probably the strongest, most resilient, most resistant, most outspoken of the enslaved to make an example of him in front of everyone else. And part of making that example of him uh, was to go through a process of complete and total humiliation, which included public flogging, which included uh, actual rape. As men, they would actually tie our hands down, spread our hands, spread our legs, and they would physically rape us. Slave masters would, would rape black men in front of his entire family. Sometimes in front of the whole plantation, they bring them all out. The bigger the black man, the stronger the black man, the more they would rape him, the more they would buck him, just to make sure that none of them would be inspired to do anything to fight back. During antebellum slavery, around that time, homosexuality was still illegal, but you had a lot of white men who would practice it, especially on the enslaved people that they had on their plantations. And they would also have relations with each other that was very covert and a lot of people didn't know about it. There was one white slave owner, James Hammond. Um, he had diaries that are infamous, and there's a book about his diaries and his life where he sent a letter to another slave owner, um, Thomas Withers, and they were having a gay relationship with each other. And Hammond was a known pedophile at the time. He molested some of his own nieces so we know some of the things that he was doing to the black people especially the black men on those plantations there's a sickness that they th act like if you're not the receiver that it's not gay or some shit like that but listen if your dick is getting hard for another man you gay even if you're just thinking about it you don't even have to do the act like if you think about it and you get that little twinge, oh, you gay, motherfucker. Like, make no mistake about it. Feminism wouldn't exist were it not for black men because the raping continues in the new plantations. Child and family services, public schools, the weaponized, depraved black church. Yeah, I said it just like that. And prisons. The raping of black men continues, or for that matter, the music business or the military. I mean, most people aren't aware Jeffrey Dahmer was raping black men long before he, and he got an honorable discharge raping black men in the U.S. military. And their castrating of us was the final blow all the way. That's the, the apex, that's the climax of that orgasmic feeling. Not only do I get pleasure out of removing his power, but by me castrating and removing his procreative organ, I actually now know that, guess what, if his is gone, mine is the only one left. There are stories of people who still have jars containing the genitalia of black men. There are stories of people who have the labia, which has been removed of black women. We're going to hear more about this as we move forward. There have been so many laws in the United States that actually regulate black women's hair and appearance. So even like the Tignon laws in Louisiana, where it was actually illegal for black women to show their hair in public. Some say because the hair was seen as so ugly and unattractive that it needed to be covered up, but most say it was a way to prevent white men from being attracted to the beauty of black women. But considering um, that black women had to wear head wraps and we could create the most Erica Badu style that it was still attracting <laughs> um, white men's attention. And 
white women could not mimic that head wrap style. And so that it actually became a threat because the white men were more interested in the black women in Louisiana than the white women. And it's so ironic that so much of the brutality meted out against African men, against black men, is supposedly because we are lusting for white women, something that we have no record of happening whatsoever. In the Caucasian culture, they have this sadistic type of mentality when it comes to sex, where the more depraved, the more nasty, the more disgusting, the more immoral you can get, the more enticing and attractive it is. They even choke themselves while they're masturbating, while they're being, you know, involving themselves in sex, because they believe that that increases the strength of the orgasm. So that symbolically is something that they were looking at when they were lynching black men. They would lynch us because that choking is something so they could see his power leaving his body, but they would get somewhat of this erotic type of orgasmic feeling about it. As an LGBT person or whatever the letters are, like, I don't have to know that about you. Like, you don't have to wear your sexuality on, a, on your sleeve, but there's no way that I, you can avoid seeing that I'm an original man. The Nazis, a lot, they were pederasts. Hitler and all his crew. Yeah, there's a, there's a documentary or a book called The Pink Swastika. Check it out. It's all about um, the pederasty and the whole Hitler youth and all of that. That's where they were getting them from and all of that. And all Ava Braun and all of those, those were just beards. The Boy Scouts were put together to be a white supremacist um, nationalist organization to teach white boys about the importance of white nationalism. In fact, the Boy Scouts influenced Hitler's youth. Robert Park, a famous sociologist, he authored the concept of the Negro as the lady of the races. He said the Anglo-Saxon people were the man of the races, pioneering, industrious. He said the Negro people were the lady of the races. They are polite, right? They don't want to offend anybody. They are more inclined to the arts and expressiveness. They said the eunuchs would be sometimes so close to the king that they would have get so much information. So they castrate them so that they couldn't start their own dynasties. Okay, they couldn't go out and now impregnate somebody with this knowledge, this king knowledge. But yeah, it's nothing like being black in America. Like I don't remember all these, you know, gay people being put into slavery and, you know, being lynched and you know what I mean? Like, I mean I'm sure there's anecdotal stories of shit happening like that. I'm talking to the disproportionate degree that it happened to us. On one hand, they stand on a soapbox and say, uh, black men are missing in the lives of their children and they're missing in the home. And the reason we have so much crime among black men is because of the absence of black male role models. But then on the other hand, when black men stand up as men, then they say that we're toxic and we're detrimental to society. You can't have it both ways. They want to put a black face to everything. Uh, and the reality is there has been no one who has been more tolerant and supportive of homosexuals than black people. Japanese guys don't know how to dance. They just jump up and down, you know, with that offbeat stuff. They are familiar with the current rap genre, so they don't want to change. Now, why are they interested? Because, like everybody in the industrialized world, there is this LGBTQ influence that has attempted to emasculate them. So when they see the hip-hop gangster thug rap video, there is all of this masculine imagery that they identify with. So what black you set is the image all of the world's you pick up. A white evangelicalism is nothing but white supremacy in drag. White feminism is nothing but white supremacy in heels. And so many of our sisters have joined with white feminists um, to try to emasculate black men. And so we have to be able to stand up uh, boldly and strongly and say, listen, I'm a man. 
The racist Caucasians thought attacking the woman, telling her she was lazy, telling her that she got bad people around her. You know, it's this movie Claudine. I just, I just really think people should watch it because it shows you how they used to, things that they do to the black men now, that's what they used to do to the sisters. They used to tell her something was wrong with her, but they switched it up. Now they're saying something is wrong with the man and they're turning the sisters against the man. They pump up the women, but it's, it's a trick because on one hand, they'll say how great the woman, black woman is, but they'll say, well, she's fat. She can't keep a man. She's not a good mother. And, um, and she's the bottom of the barrel, even though she's so strong. So what they give, they're taking away at the same time. They take all of these dead black males, young black men, and they convert them to a bait and switch thing to support black lesbianism and the destruction of the black family. Feminism became the uh, battering ram that broke in or crashed in the doors of Congress and opened the way for homosexual rights. Not only have they taken our labor or our music, they're also taking our legacy. So, you know, they want to make all of our leaders gay. We, I, I saw a book in the Library of Congress that's saying Benjamin Banneker is gay. So I guess maybe he made a deal, though, along with the clocks and stuff. We just don't know that. We'll find out one day. It'll, we'll find these papers right. Black boys are definitely targeted and marginalized more than black girls. I've experienced it. I remember being in school and coming into class and then seeing some of my black male classmates come in and the teacher's like, go to detention. I don't even want to deal with you today. And it's like the class hasn't even started yet. If someone says, I am transgender, my name is John, whatever you think their gender identity is or their pronouns should be, you better use their correct pronouns. You better refer to that child by the pronouns that they said that they want or you could lose your job or someone could possibly sue you for bullying, harassment, and the equivalence of like a hate crime. 2015 rise of hands up, don't shoot, which evolves into BLM and the agenda you're talking about. That break is significant. It speaks to the breaking down of the black family, the disruption of any kind of gender norm. And from there, everything is everything. By the time you get to BLM, it's, there is no nuclear family structure. Men are not really important unless we're dying and being used for other people's political advancement. And from there, black men end up having to chart their own path in a way we never had to before. In the 90s, the whole barrage, whole propaganda, black people are homophobic. That was part of an effort to make the black community and black culture gay friendly en route to totally homosexualizing the black community. Black folks could be side pieces and bed wenches to various white homosexual male and lesbian females in these movements as well as within the Communist Party. So a lot of these far left circles, a way to integrate, a way to get access to the white things in life was to be sexually available, even on the other side of the bed. If a man's value, if a man wants to be with a woman, right, what he, what he may think or describe as a natural woman and does, chooses not to have sex with, kiss, interact with or date a transgender person, a transgender woman, then I'm seeing brothers in particular being gaslighted for, oh, you are a homophobe because you wouldn't date or have sex with or kiss this transgender person. So once the government through its scientists declared that black masculinity was a sickness, it was to be medicated, and that black masculinity is the disease, black femininity is the cure. If you take that combination, where especially if you got a man who brought up under his mother's tutelage, and that doesn't mean it's bad, but if you have men that haven't been brought up around men, that, that rite of passage type of thing has never happened, you're gonna see a lot of bitch ass niggas. <laughs> you're gonna see a whole bunch of bitches. But even things like birth control, birth control became an issue. Because at the end of the day, even now, um, you know, men still have the same options we really had in the 50s. You know, condoms, abstinence, you know what I mean? Women have uh, over five different forms of birth control and 30 different, you know, manifestations, and that didn't even include um, abortion. So she had complete control of her body and her reproductive system and could actually terminate a pregnancy before, during, or after the sex act. We're still talking about pulling out. You know what I mean? That, that alone 
kind of offset things. And then we have to also look at the impact of no fault divorce. So if you're, if, if just having sex means that she has complete control of the reproductive process and family court means that whatever the court determines you have to pay, whether you can afford it or not, is imposed upon you by this, you know, this apparatus, this court apparatus. It, all of those kind of things position black men into a very vulnerable state. And it left black men with really one, one option, and that was the, a silent protest. And that silent protest was to step back from formal marriage and begin to actually engage in, you know, non-formal kinds of relationships because there were very few other avenues. By Rustin, clearly, uh, and this has come out as a CIA asset, spied on and worked against the black movement. And uh, before he died, he was one of the people that claimed the gay movement was the real movement of the time. So he's absolutely not our guy. We don't need him. The white supremacist elite are becoming more sophisticated with their bug breaking techniques. They're now using more propaganda and media for their sinister agendas. And one way they use this propaganda is to normalize pedophilia. A lot of white aristocrats would have paintings of them with Moorish children who were indentured and enslaved to them. And they would dress these Moorish children up very elaborately and they would kind of parade them around and they would do these very expensive paintings with these black Moorish children. They would almost display them like they were pets. And they kind of do that today. You see a lot of white actors and, and people in Hollywood parading these little black adopted children around and they dress them up like pets. Charlize Theron, she kind of does that with her black adopted children who were boys, then she turned into girls. So that's another story. But they would get these Moorish black children and they would do these paintings with them. And the paintings would have a very pedophile type look to them. It was very disturbing to see these paintings with these Moorish children. You know, what should be offensive is that, but it is probably very telling, is that there's a boys town here in Chicago. Boys town is a gay community here in Chicago, but what's telling is, I had to ask myself when I discovered it, why call it boys town? They have made it so easily obvious now uh, with people running for Congress, you know, who are open pedophiles, people who are being ousted as pedophiles. They had a TED talk recently in 2018 uh, in Germany, I believe, where a young lady was promoting. She said, well, what is pedophilia? She said, it's a normal feeling. Pedophilia is normal, just like any other sexual orientation. She said, you know, we can't choose our feelings. It is what it is. You know, we can simply choose how we act. I saw actually recently one estimate that argues that 75% of the Nigerian immigrants in Europe are being used for sexual exploitation. And I remember going to Nigeria. This is the only time we've been Af in Africa, but we were out there for a week. And there was a young kid who lived in the village that we were staying in. And he would just come around every day and you know, like they like to hold your hand and stuff like that. Like African men will hold each other's hands and stuff like that walking around. So he's, you're this little kid, he's grabbing my hand, holding my hand. And then he's like, he comes to me one day and he's like, yo, I spoke to my mother and, and she said, I can go to America with you. <laughs> now I don't even have a child at this point. Like, you know what I mean? And this kid is like 10. Um, but it was just like, and, and it's not like his mother came to talk to me or anything, and he probably was dead ass serious because maybe she thought it was a better life or some shit. So now imagine a real white millionaire pulling up in his yacht or whatever, to, pulling off a private jet, talking about, I want to take your child for a better life. And they just, here you go. Even though high ranking pedophile rings run by the white supremacist elite are being exposed, people should still be more aware of the pedophile propaganda that's trickling down into the lives of the general masses. They do the same things with the drag queen reading hour, where grown men dress up as women and they read to little children in schools. One of these circumstances in Texas was by a Mexican male who <laughs> dressed up as a female, who was a convicted child predator. In a project designed to combat homo negativity in a black community. Johns Hopkins University doled out $400,000 to a project that assessed 
adolescent black boys satisfaction with anal penetration. They're teaching children all the way in middle school and in certain kindergarten schools how to have anal sex. Having these adults teach this and then showing them how to put on condoms and all that in preschool for some children doing these little demonstrations. SB 145, they, you can be an 18 or 19 year old boy and you can have sex with an eight year old boy as long as that eight year old boy feels that he is a girl or he has LGBT leanings. We have to recognize that pedophiles actually prey on the powerless. And in most societies around the world, the most powerless are the Africans. Because of the remnants, because of the, the reality of the transatlantic enslavement trade and the continuing systems of white supremacy that are still working and are still alive and well. So that when we see people who are powerless, we're going to see ripe conditions for sexual abuse. It's very important to understand the correlation between the buck breaking techniques that were used during slavery and the scientific buck breaking and social engineering and refined eugenics tactics that are being used on black people today. Black men and black people get a bum rap about being homophobic. You would think we killed Matthew Shepard. You would think a black guy shot up the Pulse nightclub down in, <laughs> in Orlando. These are either white people or folks who are identified as not very white that do this kind of stuff. The Jeffrey Dahmer and this is mass killer. Are you familiar with uh, Ronald Dominique, white guy who was down in New Orleans and or was just killing black men, uh, killed maybe 25 black men with rape and killed them. You don't hear about it. And this, I'm certain this happens like Ed Buckner. When these things happen, you can't kill black men and it matter. It's white homosexual man killing black men. That's not homophobic. A black man saying he wants his son to grow up straight like Kevin Hart. Now he's a monster. And there was a study done at UCLA to kind of uh, assess just what size the black LGBT population was. And it came out to be roughly about 4% right, of black America, and yet out of that population, there was baby, basically one tr black trans person killed per year, some years. For black men, but most particularly heterosexual black men, it was about two to 300 per year. And that's being conservative based on what's reported, right? But you can see the kind of stratification of the data, but notice that nobody presents the data. That stuff in Chicago that's supposed to be black folks killing each other out on the streets, not really. That idiot Lightfoot, also a LGBTQ -er. She gave funds for community development directly to Hispanic street gangs. That really displeased legitimate Hispanic leadership. And what happens is they used it apparently to buy guns from the broken in box cars that were filled with arms, armed up, supplied up, and Hispanic street gangs are killing black kids. So black street gangs are killing brown kids. So the media puts it out as black on black crime when actually what it is is black on brown crime, brown on black crime. 1965, 1966, the same Johns Hopkins University. They opened, secretly opened, a sex change clinic a clinic that performed sex change operations. But look, this is, this is the, the kicker, Brother Tariq. The inaugural patient, the first one who was scientifically transgender was a black male named Avon Wilson. At one point, you know, they were trying to get brothers to wear skirts in hip hop. And I feel like I was on the forefront, if not single-handedly, may have stopped that shit from happening. Because I started calling motherfuckers out. I called out Kanye West. I called out all these dudes, uh, Omar Epps. Anybody that was wearing skirts out here was like, nah, that ain't cool. And so that trend didn't pass. It came real quick and then it's gone. They'll probably try to bring it back at some time, but 
Not while I'm around. White feminists looked upon poor black women as their role models because they say they're the only women in America who are not trapped in the slavery of marriage. So how do they handle their macho, super masculine black men? We need to use that as a model to handle white men. So if we start with them, we can make the process so that young white boys wanting to be hip will try to be like they see black men do. So if we get black men jacked around, self-depreciating with no respect and glorifying this function, we can get the white boys to do the same thing. But if you think about how much we reproduce and then how much trouble they have reproducing, like how many white couples do you know, oh, we're going to in vitro, we have to have uh, shots and all this because we having trouble having a baby. So it's not just that we reproduce faster, stronger offspring, they have trouble reproducing. So because we have so few black folk in the hood that are men, it's fairly easy to get to them and condition them to negativity. See, the thug, typical hood rat thug is a lesbian in a boy's body. Lesbians and the hood rat are raised like girls. Black America is under an estrogen assault. Through our food, through our water, through the air we breathe. Air in black zip codes is very different from air in white zip codes. It's a fact, a doctor. If I make you a transgender um, and, and you're doing man on man or woman on woman, boom, that stops reproduction. If, I, if we talk about transhumanism, which is basically, we're now integrating with machines and all of that type of stuff. Well, I, if I'm integrated with a machine, the machine can easily be programmed for me not to reproduce. And then eugenics itself is about being selective about who you let reproduce. So it's a lot of buck breaking happening right in the uh, penal system. In Baltimore, John Hopkins University had an arrangement with the local courts where in lieu of prison or in lieu of jail, if a criminal was caught, instead of going to jail, they would get a sex change. Well, if you want to deal with the prisons, there's a, um, a substance called saltpeter. Now, saltpeter is actually uh, potassium nitrate. And the brothers in the house, in the big house, brothers in lockup, they call it saltpeter. The state-by-state state legalization of marijuana is one of the greatest contributors to the gender neutering of black America. Now that we understand how deep and insidious the buck-breaking agenda really is, we now have to ask the question, how do we combat the nonstop barrage of buck-breaking propaganda, miseducation, medical, and social attacks that we as black people are subjected to on a daily basis? Anything you get from mass media, reject it. And here's the other thing, man up. It's about protecting womanhood and promoting manhood. That I believe that the strong, independent black woman uh, trope is something that is killing us as black women because it creates this mentality that we can do it on our own and we can't. You know, independence is death. Interdependence is what it's all about. Like, we can't do this by ourselves. You do need to know, when you out there and you are uh, being pulled over by a cop or something like that, man, understand, that man, is gonna beat whatever happened. Sometimes they get a family a little shut the fuck up money. And we saw what happened with that last one. It was embarrassing, that one lawyer who lose every case. If he, if he knock on my door, I'm slamming the door and letting the pit bull lose on that motherfucker. I saw people forgiving for what happened in, uh, at Emmanuel Church down in Charleston. I mean, the body's not even cold and you forgave? You got a black family. Do folks forgive when someone takes the uh, Aretha Franklin LPs out of mama's house when she dies? People don't talk to each other 20, 30 years over who had the most pound cake at someone's funeral, whatever. I don't believe it. If black people 
really had any forgiveness, we'd be using it on each other. So if you don't forgive your own, you can't forgive white people. It's a lie. The white elite understands who we are. We keep back like, oh, they're just doing that because they don't know who we are. So if we just tell them who we are, they'll treat us nice. No, the white elite understand who you are. And if you come into being as rulers of the world, he will eventually not exist at all in the world. You are charged with homophobia if all you do is say, I'm proud to be straight. To take pride in being a heterosexual is offensive, is considered an offense. We got our own flavor, our own style, our own everything. And I am perfectly fine with being a black heterosexual male from Compton in America and an original man on the planet. Ain't got no interest in no man outside of just love my brother who you are, boom.